Pokemon would not be Pokemon if they didn't do anything. I mean, could you imagine Pokemon without moves? It'd just be Neopets 2. Anyway, Pokemon moves are an integral part of the franchise, and that's why we here at Noggin thought we would make a series, a series that goes through every single Pokemon move and explain what it is, its lore if applicable, and maybe some science if needed. At least as deep into science as you can with such a broad topic. There's so many moves, if we did detailed science for every single one, Oh man, this would be long. So only some of them, only some of them, and only kind of deep sometimes. If a move is deep enough, it'll get its own video. Like this one here, yeah. Anywho, we will of course also explain why each move is the type that it is when applicable, like if it's confusing for some reason. And we figured why not start this series the same way we started our Pokemon Types Explained series, with steel type moves. And rather than spend forever explaining how the series is going to work, let's just explain through example. So, let's begin with an easy one, right after the intro. Iron Tail. It's not that bad of a move. It's got decent physical and such, but remember we're here for the lore and some science, not meta. And thankfully, this move is pretty self-explanatory. Iron Tail. Now, notably, it's a steel type move, and yet, Iron? Iron Tail? What? Well, you see, Steel type is really treated more so like a metal type, but steel sounds cooler than just metal. We covered this in detail in the video that started everything, where we show that not every Steel type Pokemon is even made of metal, let alone steel specifically, so keep that in mind. Back to the move, the Pokemon uses their tail to strike the opponent, and that tail is made out of some sort of metal. Which metal? Well, that depends on the Pokemon. Now, there are only two Pokemon that aren't Steel type that can learn this move by level. We won't really be counting the breeding thing or egg moves as a normal or natural way to get the move. In that case, the move is less innate or natural for that Pokemon, and more so just the move was taught to them by their parents. And that's why they can use non-normal moves. But the only two who aren't Steel type and can learn Iron Tail are Onix, the pre-evolution of Steelix, who, well, has a body as hard as steel, so let's be honest, this steel works. And Guzzlord, the Ultra Beast, who has a literal mace on its tail. Look at all those spikes. If he didn't have Iron Tail, it would be a travesty. Now, Iron Tail is a very special move, by which I mean it's incredibly basic. So basic that humans were able to turn it into a technical machine, or TM. What TMs are is a whole other video, but I thought I'd touch on it now while we're at the beginning of this series. Most moves that are TMs are able to be taught to many Pokemon, most of which are outside of the type the move is usually associated with. In other words, TMs are also unnatural, and also the move could be seen as not type specific. By which I mean, a Pokemon using Iron Tail could be using that move with their metal tail, striking things with it, or through a TM, say Iron Tail to a Pikachu, it's the Pikachu tensing up the muscles in its tail to irregular levels and then slamming the opponent with it, thus doing more damage than a regular tail slam as if it were as hard as metal. All in all, the TM grants certain Pokemon abilities that are otherwise unnatural for them to learn, but that doesn't mean there's not a possible explanation. Now then, I hope that was a decent example of what this series is all about. Now, some moves are very self-explanatory, but others get really interesting. So, on to the next one, Metal Claw. Unlike Iron Tail, this move can be learned by many Pokemon just by level. And with this move especially, take note of what we explained in the Not Steel Type video. Being a Steel type Pokemon doesn't necessarily mean you are made of steel or even metal. It could just be that they are as hard as steel. It all just depends on the Pokemon, and we see that a lot in this move. I mean, Charmander can learn it. So while Charmander isn't steel type, its claws must be as sharp or as hard as steel. Anyway, Metal Claw is a basic move wherein the user hits the opponent with their hard as steel claws. Pretty straightforward. Steel Wing is also really simple. The Pokemon uses its Steel Wing to strike its opponent with razor sharp wings. Unsurprisingly, Skarmory is one of the only Pokemon that can learn this move. By level, of course. In fact, it was the only Pokemon that could learn it all the way until Talonflame needed the move. Probably for the anime or something. Oh well. But this move is also basic enough that it became a TM, and thus it follows the same logic as Iron Tail. Supernaturally tensed muscles in the wings. Next is Doom Desire, the signature move of Jirachi. And it's an oddball. It's based off of Jirachi's ability to grant wishes. And it just so happens to have wished for its opponent's untimely doom. It desires doom. 
hence the name. Seems simple enough, given the Jirachi wish-granting context, but we need to go over why the move is Steel. In fact, it's one of the very few non-damaging, non-physical Steel-type moves at all. And this is where things get interesting. You see, the Pokémon anime has a very, and I mean very, large influence on the games. I mean, Rockruff's name is terrible just so that the anime dog could bark. Rock Ruff? I'm not even kidding. But anyways, Jirachi had a whole movie made, and in the movie we see Jirachi's signature move of Doom Desire. And the way it's portrayed here makes it much more realistically a steel move. It summons great meteors to hit its opponents and meteors most commonly are made out of iron. The game really should have changed the appearance from its gross, old-gen, weird look to a more accurate look. We have the technology now, please do it! Iron defense brings us back to the classic Pokemon style. The user ups its defense by increasing its iron will, its steely resolve, and by hardening its armor. Again, it's possibly just the animal tensing or moving its muscles in key locations, normally impacted, as to not take as much damage. Though considering the magical Pokémon power involved, it may also be moving key nutrients in its body around to rapidly harden its outer shell or armor. Think of it like sci-fi spacecraft. You can divert power away from the weapons to strengthen your shields. You know, making your defense as strong as iron. It could even be as simple as positioning or bracing your body. Think about armored dinosaurs. When standing regularly, they, well, they just stand around, but then when they are attacked, they can use their iron defense by getting into a position that points their defensive armor more towards the attacker, and even brace for the attack. So that concept may play a role too. After all, getting your shield striked by a sword is easier to hold onto when you've positioned and braced yourself for the impact. Metal sound is enacted by creating a very unsettling sound using the Pokémon's body. It's described as a loud, scraping sound. So think about scratching a chalkboard only several times worse. Obviously, the opponent will want to cover their ears, but doing so is a distraction, and the headache and ear ringing that ensues is another distraction. Thus, the unsettling sound lowers the opponent's special defense. Meteor Mash is interesting as the user takes its fist or arm part and strikes with the force of a meteor. Pretty hefty of a punch then, I guess. It gains its steel typing from the word meteor, mainly. You could think of this as the steel type equivalent to thunder and ice punch. Bullet Punch. Well, we all know what a punch is. And bullet? Well, that's just an adjective here, isn't it? This move is where the attacker launches a flurry of punches as fast as bullets. Now, bullets until recently were made out of lead, and nowadays they come in all sorts of different metals. Heck, I've even heard of them coming in bean and salt. Now the vegans can hunt too! Bullets are a truly versatile object, but the primary reason this move is steel type is because of the association of bullets to metal. It also always goes first because, well, let's be honest, bullets are fast. And when you are striking that fast, you are hitting super hard, so you might as well be striking with steel. And many Pokemon that use this move are. Now, with Flash Cannon, the user gathers all of its light energy and releases it all at once. The reason that Flash Cannon is not an electric-type move is simple. It's based off of light energy, not electricity. And there is no light-type. Theoretically, when using this move, the Pokémon, presumably made of steel or another reflective surface, is able to direct all of that light into a single point to charge the energy it later releases. This attack may also lower the target's special defense stat, which makes sense. I mean, a huge blast of blinding light energy would definitely make me close my eyes, so I wouldn't be able to dodge that next fireball all that quickly. When using Gyro Ball, the user tackles the target with a high-speed spin. The slower the user is compared to the target, the greater the move's power. First off, <laughs> I love that Miltank can learn this move, because if it ever wants to stop using rollout over and over, it can instead just roll out differently. It's all the Pokémon does, besides drink its own milk. Hmm. The way this move works is pretty simple. It's similar to a gyro, specifically a gyro ball, which is a type of throw used primarily by Japanese baseball players. Both this move and that throw are named after the gyroscope, as they both use centrifugal force to spin. One uses that force to alter its flight pattern and increase its speed, while the other uses it to rectify itself to be level with the Earth. Now, the move is almost a mix of both of these factors, using the spin from the baseball move and being level with the Earth to almost home in on the target. Well, 
least in the anime that's how it works. Think of it like Sonic the Hedgehog's homing attack, only now your body is as hard as steel. Also, gyroscopes are usually metal, so there's that too. Iron Head, as the name suggests, is when the user slams its opponent with their iron head. Now again, it's not actually always made of iron. It could be steel, like the type, or even just a really, really hard head. What a wonderfully interesting move. Magnet Bomb is pretty interesting in terms of Pokemon's whole anti-weapon thing. I mean, the Pokemon is launching bombs! Specifically, bombs made out of steel. Oh, and on a plus side, this attack never misses because they are also magnets. Even though not everything is made out of metal. Huh. Well, in that case, they are more like homing bombs then, which tend to be metal themselves. Considering all the Pokemon that can learn this move also have powers over magnetism, you could say that it's just a metal bomb, and then it never misses because the launcher is able to control it even after it's fired with their magnet powers. Neat. When using Metal Burst, a sort of counterattack, the user retaliates with a much greater force against the opponent that last inflicted damage on it. As for why it's Steel type, we'll have to look at which Pokemon can naturally learn it, as well as its animation. We can see that only Steel type Pokemon learn this move normally, and the animation shows metal shards bursting out of the user's body after being attacked. So my guess is, when using this move, the user purposefully makes some of its metal armor brittle, so that upon being attacked, it can easily counter by bursting using the opponent's hit combined with its own energy to burst the metal out of itself, striking all of those around it. It's similar in concept to Turtonator's whole thing, where if you strike its back, it'll explode and hurt you back. Only now, it's a bunch of Steel-type Pokemon that can do that with their own armor. Mirror Shot is much like Flash Cannon, however, it doesn't need to gather its light energy. Instead, it's just so polished that it hits the opponent immediately. However, instead of lowering special defense, this move is much more of a blinding attack, so it only damages their accuracy. You're just so shiny. Automize is a pretty weird move, to be honest. The deck states that the user sheds part of its body to make itself lighter and sharply raise its speed stat, so the user almost makes itself more efficient as to increase its speed, much like how automation would work in the real world, like in car manufacturing plants and such. You reduce the size and weight, and suddenly all the machines can move quicker. Gear Grind is the signature move of the Clink line, and well, what better move for a bunch of gears than to throw its gears at stuff and repeatedly pinch its opponents between them, essentially grinding the gears. Now, gears are normal normally made of metal, and the clink line is steel, so they had to give it a stab move. So, steel type it is. Very, uh, straightforward. Now, I'll give you one guess as to why heavy slam is a steel type move. That's right, because most metals are heavy. Good job. Man, I could write children's shows. Now, on top of the move's base damage, it also does additional damage based on the weight difference between the Pokemon. So it's good for Steel-type Pokemon to learn, as they are generally heavier than most. Steel and metal is very dense, thus weighs a bunch. Yeah, scientific terms. Now, I swear, Pokemon likes gears as much as they like bones. So there are several gear-specific moves, just like there are bone-specific moves. But not only that, they love gears so much they made a gear waifu. The move Shift Gears is a status move where the user essentially gets amped. It shifts gears, a common saying, to gain more attack. This is in reference to gearboxes or transmissions where you shift the current gear to either gain more speed or gain more torque, essentially power. King's Shield is another signature move, this time for Edgy Slash, and it's simple. It goes into its defensive posture, hiding itself behind its kingly shield which is made of metal. Anchor Shot is Delmise's signature move, wherein it entangles the target with its anchor chain while attacking, thus it becomes unable to flee. The anchor and its chain being, of course, made of metal, a common material to make an anchor out of. Funnily enough, the animation sends out an additional anchor, not its body. So is Delmise actually two anchors? Does it have anchor summoning powers? Or are we just supposed to be using our imaginations? I can't wait for a Pokemon game where the models actually, like, move to bind each other and stuff. Double Iron Bash is the signature move of Melmetal, wherein it rotates, centering the hex nut in its chest, and then strikes with its arms twice in a row. This may also make the target flinch. I mean, you got slammed twice by this thing! I'd flinch too! And considering that you are getting bashed, by iron, a double amount of times, it's clearly Steel-type. Smart Strike is a tactical attack wherein the user strikes its opponents with a very sharp horn. 
However, many Pokémon with horns are able to learn this, not just Steel-type ones. So it's similar to Metal Claw. Many horns in the Pokémon world are as hard as steel, and thus has steel-like properties, even if it isn't actually steel. I mean, steel and metal can be pretty sharp, that's why we make knives out of them. Wouldn't knives suck? Gear up. Gah. Again, the gear thing. Like, there's only four gear Pokémon, Game Freak! Why do they get so many special moves? Well, this move is a reference to how in many RPGs, the character's gear, when leveled up, gets better. All right, now I'm just adding fluff. It's again just based on transmissions shifting gears. The user engages its gears to raise the attack and special attack stats of ally Pokemon with the plus or minus ability. So it's pretty much just shift gear, but for allies. Likely, this is due to rotating gears being able to generate power. Then it can give that power to its friend. Sunsteel Strike is the signature move of Solgaleo, the legendary Pokemon, the emissary of the sun. The user slams into the target with the force of a meteor backed by by solar energy. So again, we're back to the meteor argument. However, Solgaleo is a bit more based off of the sun, which is a star, and stars are not fire. Stop complaining about Solgaleo not being fire type. Stars are plasma. They are made out of gases and metals that are just super hot. That's not fire. The sun is full of plasma metal, which is why Solgaleo is steel and not fire type. Corkscrew Crash gives us the first Z move of the series. While not anything crazy, as this move is pretty generic for Steel types, so generic in fact that any damage dealing Steel type move powered up by the Z crystal can become this move, it makes the user spin very fast and ram into the target at the full force of its Z power. And the power varies, depending on the original move. Why they went with a corkscrew for Steel though is a little shaky. I mean, most corkscrews are metal, yes, but I think they were talking about the motion of a corkscrew, not the wine bottle opener. But having a metal body crash into you in any motion would probably be heavily damaging, so it's better than giving this move to fairies. Fun fact! This move in German is called Turbo Spiral Combo! Hilarious. Searing Sun Ray is another signature move. However, it is a signature Z move, so it's even crazier. After obtaining Z power, the user, Solgaleo, attacks the target with the full force that a sun deity can unleash. It's basically just the other Solgaleo move, but crazier. And I love how the dex entry has to state the user, despite this being a Solgaleo only move. It's like they just knew people would mod this game and do move swappy things like. <laughs> like make Wailhorde use Dark Lariat. So there you have it. All of the current Steel-type moves explained. I mean, what more do you want? There's simple explanations for all of them, and I hope you liked it, because we're gonna be doing all of the types! Yeah! Have any thoughts, comments, or ideas on how some of these moves could be explained a bit better? You let me know down in the comments. And until next time, please remember to never stop using your noggin. You can use them as instruments. Noggin merchandise.